You ever see those skiers in the Olympics when they're standing there at the top of the mountain and they got that stick in front of their knees? And you wonder, what does that feel like? You know, I know what that feels like. I wanted to take you back to kind of your earliest uh, comedic days, if, okay. if that's okay. So oh, I love here, those days. Uh, how about the most memorable of those and why? Well, uh, there was a lot of drawing of cartoons. I had another friend who we would draw cartoons and we would, uh, you know, compare them and, and critique them. Um, I would love to have been a cartoonist. Um, I like, it's, it's similar to uh, stand up. It's a very uh, um, pure kind of exaggerated reflection of life cartooning. And, um, but I did do a, a, a ventriloquist act in, a thir in our, my third grade uh, talent show. And I still have the dummy in my office. You know how your mother throws everything out? Sure. Somehow this thing didn't get thrown out, and I still have it. So you would rate comedians on The Tonight Show, I, I think, back in the I day when you were very, a kid? I uh, was very judgmental of comedians from the very beginning. I would, even as a little kid, I would go, this guy's not funny. Or this guy's really funny. It was funny because uh, my daughter, who was also um, very talented, and, and is, she's a writer, and... Uh, does thinks about comedy, does writes comedy, and she started inhaling content at a certain point in her life, and I watched her do it, and it was the same way I did it. I mean, I six or five or six hours of television a day was an absolute minimum for and, me. And you said that's how you kind of most learned about life. That's how you learned about how I learned about life, but that's how I really learned about the all of the various structures that make comedy work. Now, I didn't know, it's, it's funny when you look back on your life, and I didn't know that's what I was doing. Right. But I look back and I go, that's what I was doing. I wanted to know what is the structure of that joke? Why, did, why is that joke funny? And you would write down jokes I would you write heard down at, all the jokes that I liked And then you'd on analyze TV. it. And I would take, uh, like, laughing was a really big deal in school in the 60s when that came on, because it was all jokes. So the kids loved it. And the next day, we would talk about the show. And I never wanted to forget one of the good jokes, so I would write them down. September of 76, what was it about standing on that uh, Long Island Railroad platform in Massapequa that really hit you? I mean, to this day, it was like, it's like, I, I'm there. You know, uh, I, I often call comedy uh, an aquarium. It's an aquarium and you're a tropical fish. And when, if you can get in there, um, you go, well, this is it. This is the environment. I can live in this environment for the rest of my life and um, avoid all the things of life I don't wanna do and do the one thing I do want to do. But, but it wasn't as if you'd made it big then. I was making, I think, $60 a week emceeing, uh -huh. which I thought, I'm going to live on $60 a week. That, that's all I need. But um, It was just the idea that now you could make this your profession? You have resonated? to understand, I wasn't one of those people who believed I had talent. I didn't think I had talent. There was one kid in, at Queens College we would go watch comedians at the clubs, Catch a Rising Star and the Improv, and one kid had said to me, I, I bet you you could do that. And I it was all I ever wanted, but I wouldn't even say it out loud to anyone. But when he said that to me, that was like giving me permission to say, I would like to do that. Set the scene and tell about the conversation you had with Jackie uh, a few weeks into Jackie your, Mason. Yeah. Well, so I'm doing comedy like two weeks. And I'm at this club called the Golden Lion Pub on West 44th Street, which is really just a restaurant and a bar. And Tuesdays and Thursday nights, they would take out one table and aim one of the lights in the ceiling at the corner. And 
uh, Broadway singers would sing a couple songs and they would let comedians go on. And it was a couple hour show, you could do 15 minutes. And um, so I was just started. I didn't even have a shirt, like this type of, I didn't even have one. I would just go on in a t-shirt and jeans. I was 20 years old. And uh, Jackie Mason was in the audience who was, you know, a gigantic star in comedy, even then. And uh, he says, come here, I want to talk to you. And he takes me over to the bar and he says, uh, you're going to be so successful at this, it makes me sick. <laughs> that was exactly what he said. And I was like, I, you know. And that carried me probably for five years. Really? Oh, yeah. Because he was a professional comedian. Right. I was just, you know, I was not someone, I thought I was funny, but I thought everybody was funny. All of my friends were funny. As funny as I was, I thought. Describe one of your first shows at Catch a Rising Star where you just go blank. Well, the my MC. first time I went on stage, I went blank. You can't imagine um, what it feels like to step on a stage as a comedian the very first time and you don't know if you're funny or not. And when you watch other comedians, it seems like there's a funny atmosphere in the room. The audience seems to be in the mood to laugh when you watch a comedian, right? They're, they clap as soon as the person walks out and they seem almost giddy. And when you walk on stage, that is not what's going on. <laughs> that uh, there's nothing going on. It's just dead quiet. It's a library. And you learn over the years to create, you have to create that mood for them. But, but when you don't know that, and you walk on stage the first time, and it's just dead silence, and the only sound in the room is your voice, your shaky voice, and these ideas that you don't, have any confidence in. And I got up there and it, it, it just hits you like a train. It's just, oh, this is My hands way, are sweating, thinking, yeah. this is way harder than I thought. I thought, they're in the mood to laugh. I'll say some things that are kind of funny and it'll be okay. And it's not okay. It is not okay. It's just dead silent. And I only was on stage for two, three minutes, my mind went completely blank. And uh, then I didn't go on for, I think, six months after that. Why so long? Because I, I thought I, I need to write and prepare something that I really know what I'm doing when I get up there. I realized from that that, oh, this is way harder than I thought. I thought I'd be on The Tonight Show in a, in a few weeks. That's how dumb I was. I mean, you obviously ended up going on Carson a ton, uh, but what about the fear of going on Carson do you miss today? That was abject terror. Standing behind that curtain um, of The Tonight Show in 1981 on May 6th, uh, knowing that if I go out there and do five minutes and it works, I'm I have a career, and if I don't, I'm going back to the clubs for I don't know how many years. Which is okay, but you know, you want to really be this thing. You want to be a professional comedian. You ever see those skiers in the Olympics when they're standing there at the top of the mountain and they got that stick in front of their knees? And you wonder, what does that feel like? You know, I know what that feels like. That the next 90 seconds of my life is gonna change my life. That's, that's, uh, I don't need a lot of that. <laughs> I've had that a few times. 